So somebody could be neutral about the existence of Zeus. Okay? But you can't be neutral about that which is ultimate. Can you be neutral about the ground of all being? No, you can't. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, so there are some things, there are some things that you can't be neutral about. There are many things that you can be neutral about. Okay? So if God is conceptualized as being the supreme being, but not the ultimacy of reality, you could get away with having a lack of belief. But if God is conceptualized as being the creator and all that that entails, then you cannot be neutral. Your absence of belief is a denial, whether you admit it or not, and whether you are cognizant of it or not. Well, that still sounds like a textbook example of special pleading to me. I'm okay, sorry. you're an idiot. What you just said, you're a textbook example of a moron. There's no yeah. special pleading here. I have five you're not, feelings of you're not under, listen to me. You're not understanding. You see, this is your go-to phrase. Whenever you do not want to accept something that has been clearly laid out to you, your go-to cliche is to say, oh, that's special plating. Do you realize that you have a habit of doing that? Only when I'm under the impression that something is special plating. Do you understand, do you understand that every entity under consideration will either be ultimate or not ultimate? Is that special pleading? Well, we, we don't really have any conclusive proof that... I asked the, you a question. Any entity that exists, it either will be categorized as being ultimate or not ultimate. Do you accept that statement? No. Okay, then you're dumb. Either a proposed entity either exists or it does not exist. Do you accept that statement? Yes. Good, then you're an idiot. Because then you should accept the first statement. Either I have a big nose or I do not have a big nose. Either I exist or I do not exist. Either I am ultimate or I am not ultimate. Do you accept that statement? Yeah. Good. You've now contradicted yourself. Do I have a big mm -hmm. nose? No, I don't. I do not have a big nose. So you've now contradicted yourself. I said either an entity is either ultimate or it is not ultimate. And you and you rejected that. But then when I then when I gave an example and I said either I am ultimate, am I an entity? Well, they're an organism. I'm not sure if Am I an ent Listen, listen. See, this is why it's so difficult to talk with you. I am an entity. Okay, fine. Okay. Hey. Now, when I proposed the question, either an entity is ultimate or is not ultimate, you rejected that. But when I simply reformulated it and gave an example of an entity by giving it another na name, such as myself, either I, okay, okay, I'm giving a specificity to an additional property of an entity, okay? I am an entity, right? So you 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 do not realize that within the span of 60 seconds you contradicted yourself. You cannot sit there and say reject the notion that for any entity 
it is either ultimate or not ultimate, reject that statement. But if I say to you, I am either ultimate or not ultimate, and you accept that, you, it now now it, it demonstrates yes. two things. One, you're contradicting yourself, and number two, you 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 don't you don't have abstract reasoning skills. Well, I mean, the, there's an argument to be made that there are some distinctions to be made. You're not the- you're not getting this, dude. You just you're just not capable of having these kind of conversations. And I keep on telling you, you, you haven't you haven't achieved the ability to to reason abstractly to a sufficient level yet. There's still hope for you, right? If you do, you understand that. If you reject the notion that an entity is either ultimate or not ultimate, you rejected that proposition. But what if that entity in question is me? Do you realize the contradiction there? Sort of. I mean, one is no. the first. Uh, listen, did you reject this statement? that an entity, an unspecified entity, an entity is either ultimate or not ultimate, you rejected that notion. But then when I specified what the entity is, you accepted it. Yeah, okay, fine. I contradicted myself. I got confused. Yeah. Temporarily. Yeah. No, I'm not confused. The law of excluded middle. Something is either A or it's not A. Yeah. Okay. So you yeah. see, the problem is atheists, whether deliberately or inadvertently, conceptualize God as a creature rather than as creator. And God's creator status or category, which is not special pleading, entails his ultimacy, not just supremacy, ultimacy. And there's a difference between the two terms in this conversation. Ultimacy entails that God is unconditionally not dependent. God could have supremacy but still be a derivative or dependent being in a world where he is a creature just like everything else is a creature. And you could lack belief in that. But atheism is the lack of belief of all God concepts. So that includes God as creator and the ultimacy of reality. And if you lack belief in that, then the prop- any proposition that comes out of your mouth by implication will have viability and metaphysical intelligibility in virtue of not God. And if the mm-hmm. viability of your propositions, if the intelligibility and vi- viability of any proposition that comes out of your mouth is in virtue of not God, then you have denied the existence of God, whether or not you are aware of it. Uh, I mean, um, if God is the ultimacy of reality, then, uh, um, you know, intelligibility and uh, my reasoning and all that is derivative of God, uh, irrespective of, of my conviction. You're not, you're, not, you're not getting the big picture. I've explained this to you many times. When you lack belief in something that is designated as ultimate reality, then when you speak by implication and in virtue of your position, your propositions that will come out of your mouth will only be putatively invoked in virtue of the negation of what you lack belief in. If you lack belief that X is ultimate, then your propositions only have uh, potential viability in virtue of not X. Okay? And if you, when, you, when you speak from a, a frame of reference, a worldview where not X is ultimate, you have denied that X is ultimate. Okay, so as an atheist, how should I just uh, go about distinguishing um, the Bible from describing ultimate reality 
and that proposed ultimate serialty. I don't understand that question. Uh, it means that um, the God of the Bible, um, at least as far as far you can tell, uh, you know, um, outside of the Bible, uh, has not been observed in a way that's uh, you know, in directly or indirectly that's even remotely verifiable. So. How okay. do I, how now, do I you've, made a, you've made a, you've made a claim that God is God is not known indirectly in any way that's remotely verifiable yeah right okay so what you're claiming now what you're claiming is is that all facts are not indicative in any sense or stand in causal relations with God that's your position that doesn't right? follow, actually. that's his position. Well, it might be his position, but that doesn't follow from what he said, right? It's one thing to no. say that he doesn't know that all facts stand in relation to God. It's another thing to say that facts do not stand in relation to God, right? Thank no. you. If, if, that, no, you're not understanding. If he, if he doesn't know it, then he's made, a, he's made a, an evaluation that the facts that he's acquainted with are not indicative of God. The assertion is implicit. Okay? A an assertion need not only be explicit, it can be implicit. Okay? Are you, are you, uh, who was that who just spoke? Um, destroyer. Uh, okay, uh, Destroyer. Yeah. Destroyer. Has anyone ever denied murdering somebody, but by virtue of their conversations with the, the police, they implicate themselves as the murderer without intending it? Yeah, of course. I, I, good, but good. Then you can. My question is, then, how is then this you can, you can, you can deny the existence of God without intending to do so. Well, you have to have that um, sort of mental state where you think that the, that God does not exist. Do you do you think that the denial of God is not just simply explicit; it can be implicit? Okay. Now, when we talk um, about God, mean, sure. are we on the same page here that when we talk about God, we're talking about the creator who is ultimate? Of course. Good. Now, if you lack belief in that, then you deny it. Right. Yeah, no, I, I disagree with that. Okay, well, then you don't you understand it because then you can't disagree with it because if you disagree with it, that's incoherent. And I'll tell you why it's incoherent. Okay. It's because if you lack belief that X is ultimate, then your verbalizing anything will be in virtue of not X. Why can't someone who lacks belief in X um, be uncertain of what is ultimate? You're not under. Okay, you're so not. You're not, you're not understanding. Ultimate. You're not understanding because whatever propositions come out of their mouth will only exist in virtue of not X. In their view, right? No, you, listen, you're not, you're not understanding it. Of... Do you understand, listen to me, do you understand <laughs> that all states of affairs, okay, all true propositions will only be true in virtue of what is ultimate? Do you understand that? We can, I'll grant that. I understand the claim, yeah. You, do you, no, do you accept it? I will accept that for this discussion because it's there's a lot. No, I'm saying do, no. Do you personally accept that statement? I'm willing to grant it for the discussion. No, I didn't ask you that. Okay, give me another sleazy, evasive answer, and you'll be silenced. I don't feel. Do that that's you sleazy. do you accept? Do you accept that when somebody verbalizes a putative fact, or they verbalize a proposition that is deemed to be true? In either way, it will be true in virtue of what is ultimate. So a quick clarification question, right? Do you mean ontologically, right? So That's right. That's what I'm talking that, about. I'm or talking, do you mean, well, okay, but I'm that's talking, what mean. Yeah. Do you agree that for any putative fact, it will only be a fact in virtue of what is deemed to be ultimate? So, so when you say deemed, you're, you're implying can some something, sort of epistemological can, thing. Can a putative fact be true not in virtue of what is ultimate? Okay, so now you, you are talking about ontologically. Um, That's not an answer to my question. Can a putative <laughs> fact considered a, to be true 
not in virtue of what is ultimate. Is that coherent? I'm not sure what you mean by ultimate in this context. Okay. Can you uh, you've heard me talk about it. something is ultimate if it is absolute, unconditionally non-dependent, and is the basis of the reason why anything exists. Right. So maybe there is something okay. like that. And if, and if there is something Ultimacy like Ultimacy does um, not necessarily entail supremacy. Ultimacy right. means it is unconditionally non-dependent, and every other fact derives and depends upon that. Now, is it coherent to say that you can have a viable, metaphysically intelligible fact not in virtue of what is ultimate? Right. If there is something ultimate like that, then of course not. You're not I mean, answering my question. Last chance, dude. Can a putative but, fact be deemed to be coherent, not in virtue of what is ultimate? You're asking me to arbitrate on whether there is something bye bye. That is ultimate. And, Yeah, there are people who come into this room, it's not that they don't get it, they don't want to get it. Because once they do get it, then they realize that they're in a corner that they can't come out, get out of. That their position entails the denial of God, but they know that they have no basis to deny the existence of God. So rather than acknowledge their conundrum, their state of incoherence of their position, they just want to jabber. Yada, 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 yada. Gabba, gabba, gabba. Is NinCloud still trying? Sorry? Did I what? Well, I mean, you were yeah, going listen. before Troy came yeah. in. Yeah, NinCloud, do you understand that it is incoherent to say that you can invoke a putative fact not in virtue of what is ultimate. Do you understand that that's incoherent? So then one more time, putative fact. Just real a, quick. a putative fact, okay? Putative means that it is attributed to be the case, okay? Not that it's just thought of, okay? It is incoherent to say that you can have a viable fact not in virtue of what is ultimate. That is incoherent. A fact can only be a fact in actuality in virtue of what is ultimate. Oh, okay, so, so you're saying that um, if you tell me there's an apple on the counter, then that's only a putative fact if there's actually an apple on the counter. The apple only exists in virtue of what is ultimate. It is incoherent to say that the apple exists not in virtue of what is ultimate. Well, won't it's, apple it's, is... it, Do you understand that it's incoherent? How many times do I have to explain this to you? Yeah, but I'm asking you. There, listen more. carefully. Listen carefully. We have what is ultimate, and then there is stuff that is not ultimate. Do you understand that? Yes. Okay. Now, if we invoke or speak of an entity or state of affairs that is not ultimate, then by implication, it only exists in virtue of what is ultimate. So if you say anything that comes out of your mouth, whatever proposition comes out of your mouth, right? And you say, I lack belief in X, and X is categorized as ultimate. 
then that statement itself and the proposition that it contains will only exist in virtue of not X, which will be deemed to be ultimate. And if your position entails that not X is ultimate and is the basis for all propositions or putative facts, then you deny that X is ultimate. And when you deny that X is ultimate, you deny its existence. Okay, there's but... No, listen to me. There's no escaping this. It cannot be escaped. Okay, fine, but so, so again, just to make sure we're on the same page, any proposition I may I make will be will be in virtue of what's ultimate. Right? Whatever, whatever comes out of your mouth will be in virtue of what is ultimate from your worldview. To deny that is incoherent. But my worldview is objective. What? My worldview is objective. You're an idiot. How so? That has nothing to do with it. Then if your worldview is subjective, then everything, everything is relativistic. Therefore, you have no grounds to say anything. You therefore, um, then what you were saying is, is that the foundation of your worldview is not uh, objectively identifiable. Therefore, whatever you say, you're not identifying what it actually depends upon. Therefore, it, it, it it's non-existent as far as you're concerned. No, so, so my subjective... You're not, you're not getting... You're not... Listen to the, me. Are you deliberately trying to annoy me? No. Okay. Do you, under, you, under, you understand that... You have to have, okay, when you have an ontology, you're conceptualizing the nature of existence, right? In order to invoke the an intelligible proposition or an intelligible fact, the intelligibility of any proposition or putative fact can only be in virtue of what is ultimate, objectively what is ultimate. If you concede that you you don't have in mind anything that is ultimate, then you need to shut up and be quiet because now you have conceded that there is no identifiable reason or basis for any fact. You, you, you are destroying the intelligibility of anything you assert. So my subjective worldview is grounded in my existence in objective reality. Okay, that's gobbledygook. Okay, oh. we're we're done, Nin Cloud. How many times have I gone over this with you? Okay. So reality isn't objective. Okay. Have a nice day, Nin Cloud. You 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 you. I have I I have explained this concept to fourteen year olds and they've understood it. You're in your 20s and you don't understand this. It's not complicated. Either you don't want to do it and you're trolling me, or you are severely deficient in your ability of abstract reasoning and critical thinking skills. Okay, fine. I'll mute myself. And I've, explained this, I've explained this to young teenagers and they understand it. And Cloud? Is it okay if I just mute myself and just listen in then? I, I, I think... I've got. To, I've explained this over and over and over and over and over again to you, and this isn't just today. I've done this on many days in a row. Everybody's existence, everybody who invokes any putative facts, everything that is invoked conceptually will only be viable and metaphysically intelligible in virtue of what is the foundation of your model of reality. What is foundational is going to be categorized as what is ultimate, what is unconditionally non-dependent, and that 
that which everything else derives and depends upon. Suppose somebody says A is ultimate. Another person says, no, I do not accept that A is ultimate. Then you are denying A. Okay? okay but, ta- it's, it is not the same thing as denying gold on Mars. Okay, but that, Mars. Yeah, so, so uh, I'm curious. Let's say that I uh, stand between two people. One person says that X is ultimate, ultimate reality, and the other person says that, no, um, set is the ultimate reality. How am I to go about to, um, you know, figure out what is what without, you know, appealing, uh, um, resorting to blind faith? Um, the, the answer is you can't, given your worldview, until you accept the revelation of God. What the, the, the nature of reality, the ultimacy of reality cannot be known or identified unless it has the property set of the God of the Bible. The reason why you do not accept the revelation of God is because you are still clinging to your autonomous reasoning. And your autonomous reasoning is your mind will determine what the nature of reality is and use that as a framework to interpret facts rather than your mind will be in submission to the mind of God and how he has revealed it. If you are familiar with the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, you are familiar with that communication. You will either accept that it is self-attesting and self-authenticating and that it is the revelation of God, or you will make the determination it is not the revelation of God. Okay? But you now, have other books. If you, if you if if you if you judge that it is not the revelation of God, then whether you realize it or not, you are deciding that it is your mind that determines the nature of reality and the facts therein. Your mind determines the nature of reality as opposed to your mind is in submission to the mind of God and how he has revealed it. Okay, that's precisely the situation that Adam and Eve were in when God gave them a revelation. He said, do not eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. God gave a clear, understandable communication of who he was. And he said, do not eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And the day thereof, you shall surely die. In the Hebrew, it's dying, you shall die. Satan came along and says, "Did, did God really say that? He first asked a question. He 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 told he was basically telling Adam, you should not consider that to be the revelation of God, that it is infallible and always truthful. Did God really say that? What was he attempting to do? He was attempting to get Adam to change that his mind will be in submission to the revelation of God or the mind of God and how God has revealed it, to where Adam now becomes the determiner of the nature of reality and the arbiter and interpreter of facts, not in submission to the revelation of God. That is precisely the position that you and every other non-Christian is doing. It is exactly the same situation. And Adam is saying, Adam is saying, when Adam ate of the tree, he just said, "Listen, I need, I need, I'm going to need proof other than God's communication that the the knowledge of the tree of knowledge of good and evil is going to kill me. So I'm going to learn. I want, I want proof by experience. I want empirical proof." that the tree of the knowledge of good and evil is bad for me. That's the position that you're, you're, you're in. You are rejecting the revelation of God as the revelation of God, and you can only do so 
from a position where you have decided that God is not God and God has not revealed himself in the Christian scriptures. But Kantian theory of faith in just about anything? No. Have you, are you familiar with the doctrines of the Bible? Well, I haven't read it since 2011, so I'm a bit rusty. But okay. Are you familiar with the basic concept of the Bible? Good. Do Have you accepted that the Bible is the revelation of God and self-attesting? Do you accept that? No. Good. Guess what? You have now admitted that you're operating under autonomous reasoning. Well, what if you still believe in God via natural revelation? Just not through special revelation in the form of the Bible. It doesn't. It doesn't matter. To the extent that one does not is not taking their reasoning in submission to the mind of God and how He has revealed it, right? And that includes the Christian Scriptures. To that extent, you are you are you are now operating under autonomous reasoning. Autonomous reasoning says. I will determine what the nature of reality is. Listen, wait a minute. Are you a Christian, sir? No, I'm not. That's why I asked the question. What what are you? you? Believe in the Creator God. What are you? Natural revelation. What are you? I I believe in a panentheistic God. But that's what I'm saying. What if you believe in God via natural revelation? Okay, now, now, you sir, you sir, you sir, have now transparently made it clear that you're operating under autonomous reasoning because no, I yield you to have, God. you no, no, you're not. And I'll tell you why, because the God that you just invoked doesn't actually exist. The God that you have invoked is simply the product of your vivid imagination. Okay. You no, autonomous no. reasoning. Listen to me. Listen, listen to me carefully. Quantum mechanics says otherwise. Yeah. Right? Dude, dude, those are throwaway statements. That's white noise. No, it's not now, a throwaway let me, statement. Please do not overtalk me. Please do not overtalk me. Now, autonomous reasoning applies not just simply to atheism. It applies to all idolatrous conceptualizations of God. Okay, do you understand what I just said? Autonomous reasoning applies to idolatry as well. Idolatry is conceiving of God in other than how he has revealed himself through natural and special revelation. Now, your position is that creation is a part of God. Okay? You realize that? Yes. So you are denying the creator-creation distinction because sure. the, the universe is now a part of God rather than it is separate and distinct from God. Now, right. where, did you get, where, 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 did you, where did you get that understanding from? Where'd that come from? As far as the monistic idea, where did I come yeah. to that conclusion? Well, yeah, where'd you get that from? I would say through my understanding of the fundamentals of quantum mechanics. Yeah, dude, dude, you're wasting my time with no, such I'm, a stupid that, statement. You're well, wasting you, my, my time. Understanding of Sir, quantum mechanics where did you get the idea that, that the nature of reality is monistic, it is oneism, that all is God, and that the universe is just simply part of God? How did you determine that that is true? So I base it off of the law of the conservation of mass and energy. Yeah, yeah, dude, so dude, stop right here. Listen to me, listen to me. Do you, I mean, I, hold on a second. Let me answer the question. No, I'm not going to let you answer you. I'm right. going to ask you a question. Exactly. Do, you smoke, do you smoke pot? Okay, so is there a mod in here? Do you, do, no, I'm the mod. This is my room. Do you smoke pot? I asked you a question. Here, do you? Oh, do yeah, you me yeah me. I'm the mod. This is my room. Can you answer the question? This is my room, sir. Okay, are you smoking pot? Last right chance. Now I'll yeah. ask you one more time. I'll ask you one more time. Do you smoke marijuana? No. Do you smoke marijuana? No, I don't. I never have. Okay, cool. Now, can you can you please explain to me why you're being so convoluted? Invoking invoking 
Um, no, you asked me a question. I'm okay. giving you the no, answer. Talk to me one more time, and I'm going to kick you out of the room, and you'll be banned in the room. Okay? Now. You're over-talking me when okay. I answer. Listen to me, dude. I'm Listen, listening. You're like, you're like one of these sovereign citizens who the police officer asked for a driver's license and registration, and he refuses to exist, in, and he ends up getting his, his uh, the windows smashed, put in handcuffs, and then is getting his car towed away and gets hauled off to jail. Now, I told you, over-talk me again, and I'm going to ban you from the room. Now, I ask you, how were you able to ascertain what the ultimate nature of reality is? By what means? And I understand that. Are you asking me how did I come to know God, basically? How did you determine what the ultimate nature of reality is? The, the ter- I never made that determination. The yes, determination you have. Already made when you me told God. me, when you told me that God is panentheistic, that is a categorization of God. True. Right. Good. How did you determine that your conceptualization of God as the ultimacy of reality is true and correct? Because God has let me know this innately. To me, this is just a really? model of God. How did, how, did, how, did, how did God reveal to you innately that the universe is actually a part of God? How do you know that innately? I guess what is based, based, off, so based off of... Oh, wait. Sorry. Go ahead. I'm waiting. Wait, I was gonna how say do based off that? of the fact how that, do you know that God that has innately? Wait, well, yeah, because because of the fact that I do feel the presence of God within me, that means there is some sort of connection between God and myself. Yeah, what you're now what you're now appealing to, what you're now appealing to is what is called um mysticism. Okay. But also it goes further Good. beyond so that. Do you un- do you un- so, so, so do so do you so do you understand? That you now, therefore, you have no grounds to say anything. No, it's not true. It's based off of God. No, you're appealing to mysticism, sir. I'm appealing to God. Tell me, tell me how, when, how did, how did God make you to innately know that you are a part of God? How did God make you know that you're part of God? Because we all know innately whether or not we remember. No, how did, how did, how did, how did the ultimacy of reality tell you that you're part of the ultimacy of reality? Can I ask a question? You want me to like explain how God? All right, we're done. We're done. Listen, 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 and listen, dude. All of this. I'm going to ask well, you a question. I'll assume that I'll assume that you're telling me the truth that you don't smoke uh, smoke marijuana. Have you? Have you? Were, were you in a car crash where you weren't wearing your seatbelt and you got a frontal lobe injury? Because you're you're con- what you're saying is completely convoluted, and we're done. Who's the next person? Why? Because I. No, because, I, well, no, because, because you're I an idiot. No, because I'm going to tell you right to your face. No. You're dumb. Have you never read quantum? Right. Have you never studied right. quantum? Listen, mechanics, dude, right? you're dumb. Listen, you don't know what the hell you're talking yeah, about. Your brain we're dead. done. We're Clearly. done. I don't want to have to duct tape your mouth. Okay, we're done. Okay. Well, Where's the pieces uh, in the room? Yeah, cloud, right. you had your turn. Somebody else is next. Have you had a piece of your brain removed? Okay. Bye, bye, rat. See a rat. Ah. <sighs>